possible. So if you want to get paid within 30 days, the main thing is you have to know how to estimate the patient's copay and prepare the claim perfectly the first time. Because if you don't, either of those two things are going to delay your payment in full within 30 days. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Gloves Off. My name is David Rice. I'm the chief editor at Dentistry IQ, and I'm here today with a really solid friend of mine. Brie Richardson. Hey, guys. Hey, Brie. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, David? You know, I'm doing pretty good. Where are you today? I'm in Texas. Ooh, I'm in Florida. So we're doing pretty good for winter, don't you think? Oh, we are. We are so blessed to be in the South. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're hot topicing this whole thing, and and I want to talk about a hot topic in dental practices all over. It doesn't matter unless you've been hiding underneath a rock. Everybody all day, every day talks about insurance and getting paid. So, Bree, I know you deal with a lot of practices and help them manage their insurance. So, like, how would you qualify insurance management? What are the cornerstones? So the main things with insurance management is you want to get paid within 30 days most of the time. So how you would do that is have an excellent insurance verification and perfect claim preparation and proper appeals. If you are going to submit an appeal, you want to make sure that you're going to get reimbursed the first time and not get denied as a duplicate. duplicate. And the bonus one I would say is insurance management really also depends on how you do your monthly follow-ups for the claims that didn't get paid. So the insurance aging report. All right. So first of all, shocking concept to most dental practices, actually getting paid within 30 days. T t tell me like, what do we do? It's possible. So if you want to get paid within 30 days, the main thing is you have to know how to estimate the patient's copay and prepare the claim perfectly the first time. Because if you don't, either of those two things are going to delay your payment in full within 30 days. And I want to just put a little side note here. Of course, there's a couple exceptions. If you have a secondary or these teeny tiny insurance companies that take forever to pay. But most of the time, if you are estimating co-pays the right way and preparing the claim right, you can get paid within 30 days. Ooh, I like that. And then you mentioned kind of like multiple layers to all this and getting it done the right way. Let's tackle them one at a time. So excellent insurance verifications are, they are the key to making all of this work. So part of it is an eligibility verification, but then there's the breakdown. And that's going to look different if you're a general dentist or a periodontist or some type of specialty, or sometimes general dentists do different things. Like some of them do extractions and some of them don't. So your insurance verification isn't going to look like the dentist down the street. You want to have it customized and really distilled down just to what you need so that you can spot the red tape restrictions, which is what I define any code that's a covered code, but it's going to deny for some reason, like frequency or a missing tooth clause, anything like that. You want to be able to spot it at a glance. Okay. So if I'm, if I figure out now that I can't just do it the way everybody else does it, which is, I think sometimes what people hope to get when they go to social media, right? Like, give me the one size fits all, but to know that I need to look at my practice and based on what I do and the procedures that I'm doing, I'm good. That's check one. What's, what's check two. So the next thing is perfect claim preparation. There's a lot of, um, insurance coordinators that are amazing and they absolutely care about their job, but they may not have been trained in proper claim preparation. So they don't always know what to attach on the first submission or maybe how to write a really good narrative and how to give the insurance what they need. Insurance is, it's not just willy nilly, like maybe we'll cover your stuff and maybe we'll, we won't. It's, there's a list of rules. And if you give them what they need, they can process your claim efficiently in the first time. All right. How about number three? So proper appeals, there's different companies have these weird rules and things on how they want you to appeal their claim. And a lot of times people will send their claims electronically, which is really fast. But if you do that on appeals, sometimes they'll kick back as a duplicate because it's a computer that receives it and it sees the date of service 
and the claim total and codes match. So if you get something you need to appeal, really look at that EOB. I keep a notebook and I just jot down like per insurance company, their special rules. I'll give you an example. Some of them have a different address you need to mail it to. And mm. like Delta has a provider dispute form, but you can also go on the Delta website usually and go to the claim and then submit a provider request that works really good. MetLife, if you put in the narrative or on your appeal letter, second level appeal on your first submission, that will get it push through United Concordia, you have to say first level appeal. And then if you have to do another one, you put second level review. And it's, again, it's a different address. Oh, got you. Yeah. So there's a lot of like little subtleties that people just might not be paying attention to like exactly. well intentioned, just not making it happen. Absolutely. All right. Is there a four? Is there a bonus? Insurance aging reports are so important. So I spoke to someone at Dentrix and I asked them, what is the percentage of claims that just don't get there the first time? They said it's 7%. I think it's higher, <laughs> but I don't have real data on that. But there are some times when you're submitting things electronically or mailing them, they just don't get there. So that's one thing. And then another thing is eligibility issues. If you didn't verify it on every single patient every single time, sometimes it will deny, but you don't actually get a denial. So every single month, print an insurance aging report. And if your software allows it, click view status notes so that you can see all of your notes and you don't have to pull up every single ledger on every single person and every claim at least once a month, just follow up with them and figure out where they are if they're over 30 days old. I love that. So friends, if you're watching this and you're like most dentists and dental practices that I've met at least in the last 29 years, and you want to increase your cash flow, you want to have better estimation of accurate copays, you want to like shrink your AR and streamline your process. Brie, how do people get a hold of you? You can send me an email. My email is Brie, B-R-I, at elevatemypractice.com. I love that so much. And what we're not going to get into today, but friends, stay tuned. We'll throw some show notes down there in the copy. But understand, like, this isn't like something you need to learn and learn and learn and learn for the next hundred years. Like, Brie's got a really cool program where she can come to you and help you in short order. So, Brie, I know you're busy. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for hanging out. And for the rest of you guys, until next time, we will see you here on Gloves Off. Thank you for having me. Bye.